PC because I'm Nick. Leon Lee just released their brand new 120mm Unifan AL120 RGB fans that feature lighting on the fan blades themselves. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install them when you buy one of the three fan kits and this guide will also apply to the older SL120 and SL140 Unifans as well. Before we begin, I just want to make this super clear. This guide is for demonstration purposes only. Every system, every case, every cooling solution is different. This guide is just to give you the fundamental understanding of how the lighting and the fans connect to the L Connect controller. This guide is not about the correct way to install fans or cooling or anything like that. And from what I've seen so far with these fans, people either really love them or they really hate them. Either way, this video was designed to help people understand how they work. If you have any questions, make sure you watch the whole video before asking any of them because the truth is I'm probably going to answer them in this video anyway. Here are some of those inevitable questions. Yes, this guide also applies to the SL120 and SL140 Unifans as well. Yes, you can connect Unifans without the L Connect hub, but we're not covering that in this video because it's a little bit more complicated. No, it won't work with AuraSync or RGB Fusion, etc unless you use motherboard sync mode in the L Connect software itself. Yes, you need to connect both cables on the fans for them to work properly. Now, I don't know about availability or pricing in your region at the time of filming this video. Please refer to your good old mate, Dr. Google. With that said, this guide is going to show you how to plug everything in and take a quick look at the new version of L Connect and how to configure the lighting. And it's not going to show you how to cable manage. Let's jump in. All right, let's see what's in the box with a brand new three fan kit for the Unifan al 120s Remember, this video also applies to the SL fans as well. But let's uh, crack that seal and see what we've got inside. All right, first up, we've got these. Now, these are the clips that clip onto the fans to make them work. Now, there's three in total because you can connect these fans individually or use this to clip all three fans in a fan frame, which I'm going to explain throughout the video. These little clip connectors have an RGB connector on it, as well as a PWM fan connector to make the fan spin. Now, both of these cables need to be connected, which I will show later on in the video. There's the software installation guide and the instruction guide for using the software, which we're not going to use in this video at all. There's also the regular paper installation guide, which can be hieroglyphics to some people, which we're not going to be using in this video because we're going to show you how to do all of that. There's also three AL120 Uni fans in the pack as well. You'll notice there is contact pad connectors on it and if we give the fan a little bit of a spin go on nick give it a spin hey look at that go there's also some pogo pin connectors on the other side as well and i'll explain all of this throughout the video there's an accessory kit to make these work inside of your PC. Now, the first two things here are actually optional, which I will be covering as well. This is an RGB splitter cable that splits the motherboard RGB if you're using motherboard mode with this kit, which is, again, optional. And there's also the motherboard pass-through cables or the motherboard sync cables, which I will be explaining how all of this works throughout the video. There's also a SATA or SATA power connector to power the controller and the fans once everything is plugged in. This here is a required part of the kit that you do need to use when you're installing this in your system. This is the controller itself, which allows for connecting up to 16 fans in total in groups of four. And you can see that it's labeled one, two, three, and four, which we will be covering, as well as some regular fan screws. There is three sets of four fan screws because you can screw these in individually if you wanted to do it that way, as well as ways to attach the controller to your system. So the one on the left hand side is actually a bit of double sided tape and the one on the right hand side with the label that you're seeing is a magnet so you can stick it to your case if your case is not made from aluminium. Okay, let's get into the required installation steps. So we're going to start off with putting the connector on the fan itself. Now this will apply to single fan and fan frame modes. So what you want to do is locate the clip and you'll notice that you'll want the side with the pogo pins facing up to be visible. You line the connector up, push it in and slide it and it will lock into place. But we're not done yet because this is gear seekers. We're going to show you how to do it from another angle. Okay, let's take another look at this. So you don't want to use the contact pad side. You'll want to use this pogo pin side 
and you'll want to locate that connector and line them up with the grooves on this side of the fan. You drop them into those grooves and then you clip the connector on and it will feel like it's clipping in. You'll notice there's an arrow which shows you the correct way to slide once you've aligned it correctly. Okay, now to connect a second fan is much of the same, basically the same thing as we just did. Locate the pogo pins on the fan itself. You want to line it up with the side with the contact pads, much like you're actually putting that connector on there as well. Then line up the second fan so the clips are aligned with the cutout holes, and then you slide and click into place. Now attaching the third frame in the kit is exactly the same again. You'll want to line it up with those grooves and the little notches on the fans. You want to push it in and slide it into lock. Now obviously, again, I'm going to show this from another angle just in case you got a little bit confused. So get the contact pad side up with the pogo pins facing the contact pads and you want to slide and lock into place. And here's one more time because I'm feeling generous. Get those to line up and then slide them into place. You can only fit these in one way and you shouldn't have any issues with them locking into place. Next up, we're going to show you how to connect the PWM fan cable and the RGB cable to the controller itself. Next, you'll want to locate the controller itself. Now, what we're gonna do first is actually connect up the SATA or SATA power, so then you don't have to worry about this till a little bit later on in the video. So you wanna locate the power cable, and you'll notice there is a hole. It only fits in this hole for the small end of the power connector. It only goes in one way. You can't accidentally plug it in the wrong way, and you line it up and push it in, and Bob's your uncle. Okay. Now, let's take a bit of a look at this controller. You'll notice there is one, there's two, there's three, and then there's four connectors for four fan frames or four individual fans. We're only gonna be using the RGB cable, which is this cable here, and we're going to be plugging that into the first position labeled number one. So this one's a little bit tricky, but you need to push and push it in until you feel it clip into place and then you're done. Now what we're gonna do is locate the PWM fan cable. This makes the fan spin. Remember, both of these need to be plugged in and it only plugs in one way and plug it into the PWM connector on the controller itself. This is a good time to pick which way you're going to mount the controller to your case. You can either use the double-sided tape or the magnetic strip as well. So yeah, this is just a bit of a step to keep in mind. Okay, now to connect the power up, what we're going to do is locate the SATA power connector and some SATA power from your power supply. You'll want to line it up and push it in to connect to the power to your power supply. Next up, we're going to locate this connector here. This is the other cable that's coming from the controller itself. It's a USB cable. Locate a USB front panel header on your motherboard, an available one rather. And what you want to do is then plug that cable into that header on your motherboard. And this cable should only plug in one way as well. But let's do a little bit of a flat lay to explain how this works. So we've got the two cables from the clip going from the fan frame into the controller itself. One of them is the RGB and the other one is the PWM fan connection. Then we've got the USB coming out of the controller and it plugs into the USB header on your motherboard, right? Next, we've got the power cable, the SATA power cable that plugs into your power supply on your system, right? Okay, but let's move on to the optional steps here. Now, this is not required to use this setup. So we're going to use the motherboard sync cable. Now, again, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but I thought it was a good idea to include this if you wanted to use it this way. You'll want to locate the smallest connector on the sync cable and you want to plug that into the available hole on the controller itself. Then you want to locate the 3 pin 5 volt addressable RGB connector. Locate a 3 pin 5 volt addressable RGB connector on your motherboard. And what we're going to do is plug that straight into your motherboard. I, I will show an additional step a little bit later, but this is the easiest way to do this. Then locate the PWM signal wire. This doesn't carry any power, just PWM signal. Locate a PWM fan header on your motherboard 
and plug that directly into your motherboard. Again, here's another bit of a flat lay to explain this setup again. So we've got the two cables coming out of the fan frame into the controller itself. One is RGB and one's PWM. Then we've got the USB coming out of that into your motherboard's USB header. Then next we've got the power, the SATA power connector out of the controller into your power supply itself. Now the optional wires here, the first one is the PWM signal wire, which plugs into the PWM fan header on your motherboard. And the second cable is the RGB cable for RGB motherboard sync as well. The additional step here is if you locate this cable, which is an RGB splitter cable, and what you can actually do is split the RGB signal coming out of your motherboard so you have a free and available RGB connection from your motherboard. And that's basically it. Alrighty, let's take a bit of a look at the new version of Leon Lee L Connect for both the SL120 and AL120 fans. Let's start off by just taking a look at fan selection. On the left hand side you can see here that it allows you to select whichever fan that you are using. This section we're going to cover now only will apply to the AL fans, however you can use a bit of this to translate it back into the SL fans as well, but because we've got the AL fans on this system that's all we're going to be covering. So. When you first plug them in and open the software, you should see something like this. So let's run through everything quickly. This is not a full tutorial. I'm just showing you the things to look out for. The first thing is the fan mode. So you can do PWM fan mode. You can apply this to whichever set of fans you have connected or all of them in one go. So you can be like PWM applied to all or PWM just apply to these. I'm leaving this on quiet mode for the sake of filming this video. Otherwise, yeah, you can do whatever you like with that. All right, so let's talk about the lighting modes here. So the first thing you're noticing is it has a bunch of modes in the LED mode tab here and also allows you to control the direction of the lighting if you have like a directional lighting pattern set up, the brightness and the speed. We're just going to go through some of these lighting effects and you'll you'll see it on the camera as well to see what it looks like on the fans once we enable them. Okay, don't show this message again. Okay, so let we'll set these all to red just to show you quickly how this works. Apply to all, that's every single fan running in red. How to actually change each fan individually is this section down here with this little paint bucket icon. So the way to actually change the entire fan to a different color, let's say I want the first fan to be orange, the second fan to be yellow, the third fan to be orange again, then you hit apply and it will apply that lighting to those fans in particular. So this is actually connected to the fans themselves. It's a little bit confusing at first, but it is easy to understand once you figure it out. There's also a setting here to enable and disable fans. I'll quickly show you how this works too. So let's say you've only got one fan connected per channel, hit apply. Only one fan should be lit up. Select the second fan, apply that, the second fan will come on, and lastly the third fan will pop up if we do apply. Because we've got three fans on this fan frame, that's how we're going to keep it. Okay, so obviously there's the standard rainbow modes and all this stuff here that you're used to seeing. You've got breathing color modes, and we've got to turn on the third fan. It has a habit of doing that, but yeah, let's enable all of those. Tai Chi, you can customize the two colors on this mode. We'll just slow it down a bit. It's a bit much at 75%. Uh, we can also then go, let's say something like color cycle, which is a uh, pretty standard fan mode that you're probably used to seeing on a bunch of other fans. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. I do want to show you something else that you might be interested in as well. If you have RGB lighting on your motherboard itself, you may not want to use this program at all and you might want to control everything and sync it up with the rest of your hardware. All you need to do is select motherboard sync and yeah. It'll uh, speed all the fans up to the PWM mode. It'll come from the motherboard and it will sync the lighting with the motherboard as well. But we'll just uh, 
turn that off because those fans are a bit loud. Luckily, we're running RTX voice right now, so you probably couldn't hear that in the background. <laughs> now, one mode that I actually personally used on a build that we did the other day in the Antec P120 Crystal was this mode. So you may have noticed that the fan blades and the edge of the rims themselves had different colors. The way I did that was, I wanna show you exactly how I did it. So this here is the static color for the fan blades. So yep, static, and I use this pink color. I never really use colors outside of the automatic color pickers because it's just a waste of time when I'm building computers really quickly. So I'll just apply that to all three fans. You'll see when I hit apply, the center of the fans will be that pinky purple color. And you'll see the edge of the fan is still in RGB Unicorn Spew. What you need to do then is select the edge here and change that mode to static color. Also need to tell it that there's three fans. It's so not intuitive, <laughs> it's kind of annoying. And the edge color, we want it to be orange. We just paint each fan orange, hit apply, and then you can see we have the same color scheme that we had on the fans for that video. And that's basically it. There's nothing too complicated with this software. As I said, it's not really a guide for this software. I just wanted to show you how it worked if you've never seen it before. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Hopefully this video helped you if you have no idea how to install these. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching and let us know if this video did help you in the comments down below as well. And also I wanted to mention that if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music is available on our Patreon. If you want to go early access to videos like this one, head on over to our float plane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And we did a build with these fans the other day. And from what I can see, and I already mentioned this in the video, but people either really love these fans or they don't like them at all. For me personally, they're just fans. Thanks for watching.